Okay. And maybe Sunki, you can start today. Okay. Yes. Read the para. It is no solution either. We'll read it and then we'll come back. Okay. Yeah. It is no. It is no solution either to postpone dealing with the works of life till love and knowledge have been evolved to a point at which they can sovereignly and with safety lay hold on life force to regenerate it. For we have seen that they have to rise to immense heights before they can be secure from the vital perversion, which hampers or hamstrings their power to deliver. If only our consciousness could reach the heights of a supramental nature, then indeed these disabilities would disappear. But here there is the dilemma that it is impossible to reach the supramental heights with the burden of an un unregenerated life force on our shoulders and equally impossible to regenerate radically the will in life without bringing down the infallible light and un unconquerable, unconquerable power that belongs to the spiritual and supramental levels. The supramental consciousness is not only a knowledge of a bliss, an intimate love and oneness. It is also a will, a principle of power and force, and it cannot descend till the element of a will, of a power, of a force in this manifested nature is sufficiently developed and sublimated to receive and bear it. But will, power, force are the native substance of, of the life, life energy. And herein lies the justification for the refusal of life to acknowledge the supremacy of knowledge and love alone. For it's a push towards the satisfaction of something far more unreflecting, headstrong and dangerous that can yet venture to in its own bold and ardent way towards the divine and absolute. Love and wisdom are not the only aspects of the divine. There is also its aspect of power. As the mind gropes for knowledge, as the heart feels, as the heart feels out, feels out for love, so the life force, however, humbly or trepidantly stumbles in search of a power and the control given by power. It is a mistake of the ethical or religious mind to condemn power as in itself a thing not to be accepted or thought after, thought after because, naturally corrupting, because naturally corrupting and evil. In spite of its apparent justification by a majority of instances, this is at its core a blind and irrational prejudice. However corrupted and misused, as love and knowledge too are corrupted and misused, power is, power is divine and put here for a divine use. Shakti, will, power is the driver of the words and whether it be knowledge force or love force or life force or action force or body, body force, is always spiritual in its origin and divine in its native character. It is the use of it made it made in made in the ignorance by brute by brute man or a titan that has to be cast aside and replaced by its greater natural, even if to us supernormal, action led by the light of an inner consciousness which is in tune with the infinite and the eternal. The integral yoga cannot reject the works of life and be satisfied with an inward experience only. It has to go inward in order to change the outward, making the life force a part and a working of a yoga energy, which is in touch with the divine and divine in its guidance. Yeah. Okay, so quite a big para. So to understand the basic question here he's saying, and uh, I will give an image so that we can understand what he is saying. The basic question is that you cannot go to the super mind if the vital is impure. But if you only go to the super mind, then the vital can be absolutely pure. 
because the power is there. So now to understand what he's saying, we have to imagine, <coughs> take the sea if you want, okay? A very deep sea. At the rock bottom, there is total darkness, very thick darkness. Maybe even better um, image will be a big vessel, okay, of water in which dirt is there. Now, if you throw some dirt into a vessel of water, let us say a tall glass, okay, take a tall big glass and you, it's pure water you begin with. And then you take dirt and throw it inside. Then you will see that the dirt is there everywhere and slowly, slowly, after one hour or two hours, the dirt will settle at the bottom. And the upper portion will be more or less clear, but there will be a gradation probably. Okay, absolutely at the top of the glass, it will be quite light. Okay, and as you keep going down, it will become more and more muddy, more and more muddy, until finally at the bottom of the glass, there will be all that mud which you have thrown in, it will be settled. So now, the question is, how to remove that dirt? Okay. You can do that with the power of light. Okay, so go into a, a dark room, Put that glass which you have made dirty and shine a, a light. Okay. And if you shine a light on that glass, it will go down to a certain extent, depending on the power of the uh, light, the torch, if you want. It will go down and eliminate maybe four or five centimeters. Okay. Then you take a brighter torch, you take a brighter torch, and then it may go down even another 10 centimeters. Then you take absolutely a very, very high, a 1000 watts light if you put it, and it will go almost right down to the bottom. If you go to the infinite supermental power, it will even remove the dirt in the bottom of the. <coughs> so, this is the image. Okay. Now, this is what you have to say. So, if you have to go to the highest level, you have to climb in consciousness. But climbing in consciousness with your eye, with your legs tied to the dirty white, you can't climb because it's an obstruction. So, this is a problem. So, how do you do? You have to, you can't postpone the purification of the white. You can't do it fully. But even if you purify to a certain extent, you will be able to climb higher. The more you purify the vital, the more it will be able to climb higher. Okay. So, Karma Yoga is a way of doing that purification. Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga don't purify the vital necessarily. Okay. It remains quite... Uh, Bhakti Yoga to a certain extent purifies the higher mind, higher vital, but not the lower vital. Okay. So, this is the problem he is discussing. So, <coughs> if you... If you go to the highest, you can clean the vital absolutely. But if you clean the vital to a large extent, you can go up to the superman. So this is the situation. It's a, a gradation. And now with this background, if we try to read what he's saying, I think you will understand. Earlier he has said the difficulty of cleaning the vital. He has told you in two pages, very, very difficult to clean the vital. It is full of all sorts of uh, negative uh, things and darkness and doesn't want to change. And it is full of all these things. And even if you put, uh, it corrupts everything. It corrupts your knowledge. It corrupts your bhakti. It corrupts everything. Okay. So, the re result is, if you may think, oh, the vital is so difficult. Okay, let me first purify the mind and then my heart. And then it will be possible to do that. Sirmani is saying it cannot be done that. You cannot do that. You have to start with the vital purification itself. Okay? So now we read that each sentence. It is no solution either to postpone dealing with the works of life between the vital. Till love and knowledge have been evolved to a point at which they can sovereignly and with safety lay hold on the life force to regenerate it. So what he's saying is that you may have the impression that if I go to the mental level where light is very intense, with that light I will be able to purify the vital. So he's saying that can't be done in that way because 
when you purify the mind and you get a certain amount of light in the mind, that light is not sufficient to be able to purify the mind, purify the vital. You need a higher light than the uh, spiritual planes of consciousness. So you have to climb even higher. And you can't climb higher when your vital is dying, your feet down. That's the problem. Okay. So he says, you can't postpone karma yoga until you finish with jnana yoga and bhakti yoga. That is not possible. It doesn't work that way. It works for those who are not doing the integral yoga. Because if they go, they are not bothered about the uh, impure vital and the impure uh, body. They are not bothered at all. It can disappear. They are not even bothered about the mind. They want to be on. So the, this solution that Shri is talking about does not applica, apply to the jnana yoga and the bhakti yoga. But it applies to karma yoga. <laughs> okay. And he has told you how to do karma yoga by offering, okay, by sacrifice. That way the purification comes automatically. So now, we have read the first sentence, now we read the next one. It is no solution either to postpone dealing with the works of life, okay? Works of life, karma Till love and knowledge have been evolved to a point at which they can sovereignly and with safety lay hold on the life force to regenerate it. Regenerate, to purify it. Generate it once again to its original state. For we have seen that they have to rise to immense heights before they can secure from the vital perversion which hampers or hamstrings their power to deliver. So that's exactly what we discussed. The light in the spiritual world is not enough to purify the. You have to climb even higher, he said. Okay. We have seen that to have we have to rise to immense heights. Not only the spiritual, but even higher than that, which means the super mind. So the immense heights before they can secure from the vital perversion, uh, which hampers and hamstrings their power to deliver. Hamstring to obstruct. Okay? It can obstruct altogether or it can also hamper, delay your journey. Their power to deliver. If once our consciousness could reach the heights, of a supermental nature. I said, by the way, we should also imagine the higher you climb in consciousness, the more power and the more light you get. Okay, So that's why if you go higher and higher, you get more and more power and more and more knowledge also and light. So, if once our consciousness would reach the heights of a supermental nature, then indeed these disabilities would disappear. Okay. So if you can go to the supramental level, however, by whatever means, then you can purify the vital fully. Purification of vital is possible to a large extent, but not fully without the supramental. That's what Sarvi is saying. Then, <clears throat> indeed, these disabilities would disappear. Disability of climbing higher. Okay? But here, there is a dilemma that it is impossible to reach the supramental heights with the burden of an unregenerated life force on our shoulders. Okay? It is like carrying an unnecessary burden on your shoulders. It's not possible to climb higher when you are burdened with a weight. And that weight is what the vital is unregenerated, impure, impure life force on our shoulders. And equally impossible to regenerate radically the will in life without bringing down the infallible light and unconquerable power. Infallible light, that never fails. And unconquerable power, absolutely omnipotence. But that is available only at the supermental level that belongs to the spiritual and supermental planes. So, it is equally impossible to regenerate radically the will in life without bringing down the infallible light and unconquerable power that belong to the spiritual and supermental levels. He is including spiritual because as you keep going higher and higher, the power increases and with that power you can completely, uh, to a large extent, purify the vital. But only the supermental level 
will purify it entirely. Okay. The supramental consciousness is not only a knowledge, a bliss, an intimate love and oneness. It is also a will, a principle of power and force. That's why you have the power and the force to clean the vital. And it cannot descend till the element of will, of power, of force in this manifested nature is sufficiently developed and sublimated, made subtle okay, to receive and bear it. So there is a problem. The vital is basically an element of power and action and force. So, but it is impure. So you have to purify it to a large extent so that the supramental power can come down into that and do its work of purification. But will, power, force are the native substance of the life energy. Life energy is the vital. These are all the vital nature is itself prana, energy. But it is impure at the lower level. And herein lies the justification for the refusal of life to acknowledge the supremacy of knowledge and love alone. So, you may think that knowledge and love is enough, but the refusal of life, life says, no, I have to be absolutely purified, then only you can have absolute knowledge and love. Otherwise, no. I am more powerful than your knowledge and your love. That's what love, life is. For it's pushed towards the satisfaction of something far more unreflecting, headstrong and dangerous that can yet venture to in its own bold and ardent way towards the divine and where is it going? towards the divine and absolute. So the nature of the normal man, the nature of the vital in the normal man is unreflecting, headstrong and dangerous. It can go into wrong channels, but energy is there. But that energy can be directed into wrong channels. So therefore, it has been purified. Love and deep wisdom are not the only aspects of the divine. There is also an as its aspect of power. As the mind grows for knowledge, as the heart feels out for love, so the life force, however fumblingly and trepidantly, stumbles in search of power and the control given by power. It's a mistake of the ethical or religious mind to condemn power as in itself a thing not to be accepted or sought after because naturally corrupting and evil. This is a very interesting sentence and we will have a look. Everybody I think knows that there is a, a phrase a, 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 not, a, not exactly a, a proverb, but it's a phrase that says, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And in India, it is absolutely clear that this is absolutely the truth. <laughs> the more power you have, the more corrupt you can be. Now things are changing a little bit, with, <laughs> but this is how it is. So this is what Sunday is saying, but it is a mistake to think that that is the ultimate truth. It's a mistake of the ethical or religious mind to condemn power as in itself a thing not to be accepted or sought after because naturally corrupting power, the moment you have power, you want to use it. And normally if your conscience is not yet clear, you will use it for the wrong means, obviously. So naturally corrupting and evil. In spite of its apparent justification by a majority of instances, what he's saying is that almost 100% cases you will find where you give a person power and he will misuse it. That's what he's saying. In spite of the apparent justification by a majority of instances, examples, this is at its core a blind and irrational prejudice. In other words, it is possible to purify the mind. Even with them. However corrupted and misused, as love and knowledge too are corrupted, we'll discuss that, and misused, power is divine and put here for a divine use. Shakti, will, power, 
He is a driver of the worlds. And whether it be knowledge force or love force or life force or action force or body force is always spiritual in its origin and divine in its native character. So, <coughs> this, uh, what he is saying, in spite of the apparent justification and majority of instances, that is the reason why in Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga, they tell you that if you get power, because as you keep rising in consciousness, you get power. Don't get attached to power and don't use it at all. Ignore it, because it's going to corrupt you. This is the look at power as though it's a, <clears throat> a trinket, a valueless thing lying on the side of the road. Just view it in that way. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. You can use power correctly only when your vital is pure. But when you rise to the spiritual planes of consciousness, the vital is not yet very fully pure. Okay? The mind is pure, and that's why you can rise up. But the lower is not pure at all. So if you start using power at that time, you are going to misuse it. That's what Sir Okay. So it is the use of it made by the ignorance by brute man or titan that has to be cast aside. <laughs> so I'm not going to by politicians also. <laughs> so, particularly in India. I swear also it is like that, but that too. Okay. That has to be cast aside. It is the use you make. Power is good, but don't use it. This is very interesting because everything in the world is like that. It depends on what use you are going to make of it. Okay. Look at the discovery of dynamite. Okay. It can be used for right purposes, it can be used for the wrong purposes. Look at a knife. You can use a knife to murder, but you can also use a knife for cutting. So everything. That's what everything is going to double it, the duality in the physical world. Okay. So that's what he's saying. It's a use that you are making of it that has to be changed. The power itself is never bad. This is also, it reminds me of a very interesting thing. When India uh, made the uh, atomic uh, Explosion, underground atomic explosion in uh, Rajasthan in 1973, I think it was, or 74, I don't remember exactly. So everybody started, many people started shouting, those who are moral, oh, this is an evil force, you should never have it, you should, it's a mistake India has made. That argument is completely wrong because it depends on power is always good, but what use are you going to make of it? It's a use of it that is wrong. And India very clearly made a statement that we will never make first use of nuclear power. We will never make the first use. But if someone attacks us, we will use it. So, so that is, it depends on the use that you want to make of anything in the physical world. Okay? That has to be cast aside and replaced by greater natural, even if to us supernormal. Action led by the light of an inner consciousness which is in tune with the infinite and the eternal. Okay. 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 So, <clears throat> the integral yoga cannot reject the works of life and be satisfied with an inward experience only. It has to inward experience your mind, you are in knowledge. You even have may, may, may bhakti, but you don't have the a clean vital. Okay, that's what he's saying. It's possible. That's why when you come down, there is a very famous example of Durvasa. Yeah? He is a realized soul in the mental plane, but he used to get angry and he used to curse, and that's exactly what happens. There are many people who say, Oh my god, after so many years of sadhana. We are still, we have not changed. And there's a famous case of Champaklal, who used to get very angry. <laughs> His nature was to get angry. And someone complained to Sri saying that uh, he got angry with me and all that. So Sri tells him, don't you know 
that he is very prone to anger. <laughs> but at the higher levels, my God, what's a Patlal? His devotion, love and all was fantastic. But if you can get angry, then your vital is not very pure. It may be a large part pure, but not absolutely pure. <laughs> so that's what Shadda is pointing out. And he's saying the interior yoga has to use power. Because only with power you can clean the vital. The integral yoga cannot reject the works of life and be satisfied with an inward experience only. And this applies, as I said again and again, to the Indian yoga. But the other yogas are fine. They are not interested in the purification of the vital, nor the body, nor the mind. They only want to go beyond. But the integral yoga cannot escape. It has to work in the physical world. It needs a pure mind, pure vital, and even a pure body, finally. The integral yoga cannot reject the works of life and be satisfied with an inward experience only. It has to go inward in order to change the outward, making the life force a part and a working of the yoga energy which is in touch with the divine and divine in its guidance. So big para, but he is telling you what the problem is and what the solution is. How will you do the solution? Maybe he will deal with it more in detail. Already he has dealt with it. Do karma yoga and do everything as an offering to the divine. Okay, so this is what you see. So we read the next one. All the difficulty of dealing spiritually. Uh, what is the time? 28. So we have about, uh, we have about, about 10 minutes. We can go a little beyond uh, 8.35. So, who will read next? Sunti read. So, one of you can read. Anyone can offer. Jasmine can't because she doesn't have the book. Kiran has read yesterday. So, Pallavi can read. Tuesday is her day. Yeah. And then and then is... Yes, tell me. Tarika, you want to read? No, 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 no. no, no. I'm a... Does, it, a does it say Tarika? Do you have a question? No, no, I said it is already 8.30. Shall we start? Oh, it is 8.28 in mind. Uh, how big is the panel? How big but we have the class till 8.40 Rangada nowadays. Yeah, that's right. Nowadays we are going we to... We have change. from 8 to 8.40. So we have still 10 minutes. At least we can read it. That's right. We can read the panel. Quiet. Yeah. Okay, okay. Allah, we may read it or whatever. All but the all the difficulty in dealing spiritually with the works of life arises because the will in life for its purposes in the ignorance has created a false soul of desire and substituted it for that spark of the divine which is the true psyche. All or most of the works of life are at present or, you, or seem to be actuated and vitiated by this soul of desire. Even those that are ethical or religious, even those that wear the guise of altruism, philanthropy, self-sacrifice, self-denial, are shot through and through with the threads of its making. This soul of desire is a separative soul of ego and all its instincts are for a separative self-affirmation. It pushes always openly or under more or less shining mass for its own growth, for possession, for enjoyment, for conquest and empire. If the curse of disquiet and disharmony and perversion is to be lifted from life, the true soul, the psychic being, must be given its leading place and there must be a dissolution of the false soul of desire and ego. But this does not mean that life itself must be coerced and denied its native line of fulfillment. For behind this outer life, so, life soul of desire, there is in us an inner and true vital being which has not to be dissolved but brought out into prominence and released to its true working as a power of the divine nature. The prominence of this true vital being under the lead of the true inmost soul within us 
is the condition for the divine fulfillment of the objects of life force. Those objects will even remain the same in essence, but transformed in their inner motive and outer character. The divine life power too will be a will for growth, a force of self-affirmation, but affirmation of the divine within us, not of the little temporary personality on the surface. Growth into the true divine individual, the central being, the secret imperishable person who can emerge only by the subordination and disappearance of the ego. This is life's true object, growth, but a growth of the spirit in nature, affirming and developing itself in mind, life and body. Possession, but a possession by the divine of the divine in all things, and not of things for their own sake, by the desire of the ego, enjoyment, but the enjoyment of divine ananda in the universe. Battle and conquest and, and empire in the shape of a victorious conflict with the powers of darkness, an entire spiritual self-rule and mastery over inward and outward nature, a conquest by knowledge, love, and divine will over the domains of the ignorance. So, <laughs> Shyamra has told you very clearly, and this is life's will. So, uh, I will read uh, on page 176, okay, from the first line we will read, because that's the crux of what he's saying. The nature of the vital, whether up or whether down, is here listed one by one, okay. So, look carefully and you will see the two objects of life is first of all both. So growth, you want to grow, you want to become bigger, you want to grow in every way, you even want to grow in wealth, nothing wrong with it, but you have to use the right way. Okay? So growth is necessary, but normally when we grow in consciousness, in knowledge, there is a, it is used for wrong purposes, even knowledge is used for wrong purposes. You want your knowledge for fame, okay, so this is first. But Sadhguru is saying, growth is fine, but it should be a growth in the spirit in nature. Spirit in nature, that's for God. Affirming and developing itself in mind, life and body. Mind, growth of, growth of knowledge. In life, growth of power. And body, growth of health. Then next is position. Always the vital in us is wanting growth and position. The second one. But position of what? Position not of objects, okay? Not of objects and uh, food and whatnot, of clothes, but a position by the, by the divine, of the divine, in all things. And not of the things, objects, for their own sake, by the desire of the ego. Next, third, enjoyment. Enjoyment is absolutely the right thing for the vital. But normally we enjoy in an impure manner, and therefore we get attachment. So, enjoyment is right, but enjoyment of what? Not the lower enjoyment, but the higher enjoyment. But an enjoyment of the divine ananda in the universe. Then, battle. Battle also is the fourth. These are all the characteristics of vital. Battle, you want to win every time you, you that's why you want to put down the others, because you feel your opinion is the best. But battle also in what way? Conquest and empire. This is what the vital always wants. Battle, conquest and empire in the shape of a victorious conflict with the powers of darkness. That's the right thing. Use your battle against your own weaknesses and your own imperfections. An entire spiritual self rule and mastery over inward and outward nature. So inward nature and outward nature, your body, mind, life. A conquest by knowledge, love and divine will over the domains of the ignorance. The domains of the ignorance are always at level one, at the matter, life and mind. That's the domain of the ignorance. Because as soon as you go into the spiritual planes of consciousness, level two, then ignorance starts becoming less and less and less. There is still an ignorance, but largely there is no ignorance in the spiritual planes of consciousness. It disappears completely only in the supramental plane, which is the third level. Okay, so this is what he's saying, but it's quite a big para. I just read the last book because that's it. So what is the solution? Solution is get the vital 
behind the vital, there is a psychic being. And get that psychic being somehow to come forward. How do you do that? With bhakti, with the sacrifice, this is the so. Sriyamdha Yoga, therefore, the steps are first of all the psychic transformation. That's the most important. That has to be done by love and devotion to the divine. If you can do that, there will be sufficient purification of the vital to climb higher. Then second is to climb into the level two. That's the spiritual transformation. And if you have done that, your now base is clean and you have gone to level two of the spiritual planes. Now you will be capable of going easily to the third level, the supermental level. So this is Sriyamdha's, the triple transformation. This is internal yoga, the triple transformation is Sriyamdha's method. First, difficult, but safest and the best way is to bring the psyche forward. How do you bring the psyche forward? <laughs> it is deep inside you, not with forceps. <laughs> but you have to give it, do it with love and devotion for the Lord. Prayer and always turning all your actions towards the Lord. That's what he said. We can discuss this next time more in detail. Okay. So, Sunti has to note down. And he is also explaining that even your altruism, philanthropy, self-sacrifice, even such noble things are not absolutely pure. They are, they are tinged with ego feelings. That we have discussed many times, but we will discuss it again. So, Sunki, note down page 175 and all, all the difficulties we will have to read from there. Yes, I will make a note. Okay. 175, all the difficulties will reread. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, au revoir everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you, Rangada. Thank you, Rangada. Thank you, Rangada. Thank you, Rangada. Thank you, Rangada.